Now we are on to module three. Describe how the linking process relates source, object, and machine code. Whoa, this is a lot of writing for three marks. Look at how much lines they give you here. Why didn't they give you so much lines for the question before? Anyhow. Um, describe how the linking process relates to source code object. Source code um, is typed up by the user and then compiled to produce object code um right the object code requires certain um libraries in the system So it can be executed when the libraries are made available, the machine code is sent to the CPU for execution are you looking good there? yeah yeah, no, you're looking at there source code, compile, object code, object code, libraries, libraries um, and executable, yeah, it's equal to run all right. Oh, look, some code. Finally, the function print powers is still below as expected to print some values for it. Print powers. It's going to create some variables while i is less than four. It will go through a for loop to print the the value pow two multiplied by the base over and over. As long as G is less than I. What is G? Where is G? Where did G come from? G is a random variable. Or G starts off at I. G is equal to I. G less than or equal to I. G plus plus. Okay, cool. So wherever we set I as, G will try to up to that point but then we'll have i plus plus hold on hold on hold on all right all right all right all right some thinking has to take place here now we have a variable called int i is equal to one so i starts at one now our job is to go say why i is less than four so as long as i is less than four we want to do this for loop this for loop here going to take j and set it to i so j will start off at four no, J will start off at 1 and it will go to J less than or equal to I. But it's the same number, but 1 will always be less than or equal to 1. So that will keep going on and on and on. This for loop is going to never stop. No, it will go J. Oh, so it'll be it'll be one less than one is equal to one. So then it'll be being J. One is less than or equal to one. Okay, so that means it'll run once. And then it will run and then the I'll go up to two. So then it'll be J is equal to two. And J is less than so then it'll just run this once again. Two, three, four. Okay, so each time this run is going to run once. Yeah. 
And when it runs once, it will do that for four times. No, for three times. One, two, three. I will be less than one. I'll be one, I'll be two, I'll be three. Once this I reaches up to three, it's run. So that's three times it's going to print. Write the output expected when print powers is executed. It will start off by saying, okay, power two is. Two is equal to two multiplied by, no, one. One is equal to one multiplied by two. So power two is going to be one by two, which is two. So it's going to say two raised to the power of percent D is percent D. So two raised to the power of one is two. I'm correct. So that's the first output. I'll print two raised to the power of one is two. Right, that's our first loop there. The i is going to go by one, and the y loop will say yes, cool, go ahead a second time. Then you're going to be changing i to two. So power two is, is power two is always going to be one multiplied by the base, which is. Okay. So two raised to the power of i, i is now two, is two. Okay. No, what are we getting for? No, 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 something wrong here. Oh no, power two in, in our last thing was two. Power two changed to two, right? Okay, that's right. Yeah, because pre in the previous loop, power two changed to two. I'll keep track of that. Maybe I should just do a trace table. I'd like to do a trace table and make this easier for you to understand. All right, so we have a, um, we have a I, we have a G, we have a, Power two, and we have a base, All right? So we now start off. We're going to have i is equal to one, j nothing. Power two is equal to one, and base is equal to two. Good. So we go to that. All right. So we have the while loop. While i is less than four, is i less than four? Yes, it is. Good. So we're going to start our loop, and we start with four j is equal to i. So j starts off as one. Power 2 is going to be updated to 1 multiplied by 2. So power 2 is going to change to 2 because the base is still 2 all the time. The base never changes. Alright, so that'll print all that. Okay. So i is 1. Power 2 is too good. Then we go to i plus plus. So i plus plus will go up to 2. So that means j now will go up to 2 when we start off this loop the second time and now we're going to say pow2 is equal to pow2 by base so it's pow2 by base which is 2 by 2 which will change it to 4 right good then i is going to go up by next time so i is going to go up to 3 that means j is going to become 3 then we're going to get pow2 is 4 by 2 which is 8 and once j reaches to, once i reaches to 3 the for loop will, the while loop will stop so we should be good there so 2 raised to the power of 2 is 4. All right, that's how we have it here. 2 and 4. 2 and 4. All right. Then the next one now is 2 raised to the power of 4 is 8. Nice. Because I no to the power of three. Yeah, because I would have been three here. Yeah. So we're basically dealing with the three and the eight. Alright. Hmm. That was um 
I was slightly intellectually stimulating there. Six marks. See how long we take on that question? Right. Some questions will be cake, and then some questions you have to sit around and work hard. But the same six marks as some of the other easier questions. But nonetheless, let's go. Write a function called int power base and exp exponent that accepts integer arguments base and exponent and returns the integer equal to base raised to the power of exponent. The body of the function power may only use the basic operations like multiplication or addition. Okay. Int int base and int exponent. Alright, so we have the int base and we have the int exponent. We read all of them in. Um you know did it give us enough space? Yeah man, it should be enough space. All you really need to do is a for loop here. To keep multiplying it by itself until you have reached the yeah, until you reach the exponent value. So all right, so we need to return the what returns an integer equal to the so we had we had to get something to return so we had to create int num because that's the number that we want to return uh we also had to create a variable for the loop so we create a c equal to c or something like that right good. so for c is equal to one Why are we saying one is because no, four is equal to zero. Four is equal to zero. C less than exponent. C plus plus. So that means it will go and uh, it will. The exponent will tell you how much times the loop is supposed to go. So your exponent, let's say your exponent is 3, that means it will go 0, 1, 2. So that means 3 times you want to multiply. What do you multi multiply? The number by the base. And you have to keep multiplying that number by the base. So you're going to say num is equal to num multiplied by base. So the first value of your number, all right, so the first number should start off at 1. So the first number would be 1 by, let's say the, the base is 3. So 1 by 3 is 3, and then 3 by 3 is 9, and then 9 by 3 is 27, yeah. And then we'll return the number. Wait, there's a, there's, there's a program. I'll put N4. Semicolons. And then you return the value. Return them. All right, let me, let me just make sure there's logic checking out here. You get the base and the exponent, so that tells you, okay, the base is base 2. No, the base is the base number. Yeah, so the base number is 2. And the exponent is 2 to the power of whatever. Right. So the base is 2... multiplied by its starting value so 2 by 1 will be 2 it will go again and then 2 by two will be 4 and then it will go again and it will be 4 by 2 will be 8 yeah that will be it I will cannot cool. that maths is matching right write a function prototype for the function power you know, it's very weird. So many things that they ask, you know. This is literally the prototype right here. So you're just gonna write that back over one. Well? I don't know. Alright, so int power. Oh no, you gotta say what is being centered. No, you're saying you're basically writing back what it is, int base. 
int expt. Yeah. Because the prototype is saying what the function is supposed to do. All right. State the condition under which a function prototype is required in C. Um, when the function is called before it is written. Yeah. So basically a prototype is, is usually like if you write the fun if you write the main first and any functions underneath and then you call it in the main, the C program won't know where the function is because it will be at the bottom of the arm. It will be below the main. So you usually put your functions before the main so that you won't have to worry about that. But sometimes if the code kind of spaghetti is or you just keep adding functions all the time, you have a prototype put on top and then it'll be the um the code will be able to find it. So yeah. That's prototyping. All right, that's a nice question there. Write the adjusted version of print powers. What? That calls the function power and achieves the objective of displaying three raised to the power of each even number between one and six. Ah, boy. Eight marks. All right. So what they are saying is they want to write the function print powers that will call the function power and achieve the objective of displaying three raised to the power of each even number between one and six. So let's start off by finding the even numbers between one and six, right? Um, so int print powers, no, print powers will be our void function because we're not returning anything. So we'll call it void print powers. And it had nothing to send it, so we don't have to put anything inside the brackets. It's cool. Right. Void print powers. Now, after we do the void print powers, what we want to do is we want to get all the even numbers that we could find. And in order to get the even numbers, we want to use like something like a mod between one and six even numbers we did did they say inclusive no they just said they didn't say inclusive what i mean we could do a for loop so we could say for sorry i did declare variable sorry int c that is the counter so we basically saying for c is equal to 2 c less than 6 all right because it says between 1 and 6 and that means it should go from um it should go from 2 to 5 1 should not be included so yeah so we go from 2 to 6 no, 2 to 5. That's why we have C less than 6. Hey, what happened? Wrong paper. Yeah. C++. Nice. So we've set up our loop. Now inside our loop now, I want to check to see if C mod 2 is equal to 0 then I want to call the powers function do I want to call the powers function I want to call the powers function to display the all of the displaying 3 raised to the power of whatever and I want to print the results. Okay, so I had to create a variable for result. So 
because I want to say now result is equal to powers and I'm sending what is this function powers again by base and exponent so base so let's put in 3 so powers 3 raised to the power of c yep so I'm sending you 3 and you see to the function for it to calculate the whatever it is and return that answer back to the result so it'd be 3 to the power whatever cool and then I'll print it semicolon so print f now what's this 3 raised to c is 3 raised to percent d is percent d I do our space comma the thing that I'm putting would be 3 raised to c and then comma result semicolon close brackets right if you don't have space on the line then just go to the next line it's okay nobody will have a problem with you and uh, then we close off this if and then we close off the for and then we close off the actual function yeah that should be it first there yeah? So we have the function print powers. We create variable c as a counter because we do not for loop from two to six, two to five because they said between the numbers one and six. So that means two, three, four, five. Carrying that up. This for loop will keep going up. It'll check the mod of c mod two if it's zero. That means it's an even number. Once we get the even number, we call the function powers by sending the three, which is the base, and c, which is the exponent, because it's straight to the power of the even number. And we print it out. Yeah. It out. Yeah, that's a, that's a eight marks there. Nice. All right, number six. What we have here? Using our example, briefly describe two programming paradigms. All right, we have a lot. One example. All right, so now we go to um. Let's call this word by procedural. Procedural uses a step-by-step -step approach. You could get them top down too. Because you basically go from the top down. Use it as a step by step approach. And um Yes. Um which solves problems slash tasks. Sequentially until finish. Um, what did you want? Use one ex using one example. So I would say like a um, accounting calculation. Um, example grocery bills. But I think they want an example of a programming language. So give them two examples. Don't be, don't, don't, don't be shy. Pascal. That's definitely procedural. You could also get basic. Yeah. All right, let me go. The next easiest one is functional. Um, bricks down a problem into sub modules slash functions um, that reference each other 
your functional examples i think they have example games and you could use lisp 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 yeah all right the harder ones to explain would be object oriented i'll just put op for now object oriented your key points for object oriented would be um classes and objects classes and objects and you want to see um real life mirroring and uh, object oriented examples like C++. Then you have the next one is declarative. Declarative is going to be um, um, describe tasks and give rules. So example JavaScript. Yeah, JS or JavaScript. All right, yeah. Proceed on functional, easy to explain, object oriented and declarative. They usually are a little tougher, but of course you know. Two reasons why using modular code is considered good programming style. Hmm. Readability. And maintainability. What else why? Readability, maintainability, um, troubleshooting. Is easier. All right, cool. Troubleshooting is easier. Perfect. Alright, uh, part C. The following code reads um, some integer values and then prints the sum of integer values that have been entered. Note, however, that there are two syntax errors in the presented code. What? Okay. Void mean int num list 10. This creates an array. Int new num is equal to 0. Ndx is equal to 0. So I'm to... While new num is greater than or equal to 0. Hmm. You know this? These people are real kicks. Like, greater than or equal to zero is not supposed to be like that. Greater than or equal to zero is greater than or equal to zero. But, okay. That is a syntax error. But I don't know how you could even type that, 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 that sign in. That's not even possible. Scanf and you know they're supposed to have an and sign in front of it when you're scanning. If new num is greater than zero, num in the x is equal to zero, sum plus equal to the x plus plus. All right, describe the expected syntax error on each erroneous line of code and write the corrected version. It's supposed to be while new num greater than or equal to zero. That's the first one, and um, then for the scanner. Supposed to be percent D, comma and U. No. Yeah. So did one possible semantic error that could occur during execution when the syntactically correct version of parameters operating. Assume that the user will enter only valid integers, and that integers in C are represented using four bytes. What semantic error could occur? What could be a problem? The problem that could happen is that the NDX could go above 10 because you're using this NDX inside here. Because you're using that NDX inside there, this number 
will go up to 10 as long as they keep putting a number that's greater than 0. So the user could make this loop go on forever, well, long enough that you run out of spaces in the array. Okay, so you can say um, the ndx value can cross 10 if the loop keeps going on. Alright. Um, okay. To seal off the day, write a program and see that uses code to read a set of integers. And it outputs the most frequently submitted integer and the sum of the integers. Your program should keep track of frequencies using an array declared using int norm frequency 10. Error handling to prevent errors during execution should be included in your program. Assume that the contents of an integer array are initialized to zero on declaration. All right. Hashtag include stdio.h. Alright. So, what we're going to do is we're going to declare all the variables. So, we want to read a set of integers. So, we have int num. Then, output the most frequently submitted integer. Um, frequently alright frequently submitted integer if I want to submit the most frequently submitted integer I want to keep track of every integer and see which one yeah, program program should keep track of frequencies using a recall number. So the set of integers that I'm reading could be anything. Keep track of frequencies using an array. Declared using in num frequency ten. What are we doing? We are trying to see if the number opens the most frequently submitted integer. Is it that we only have 10 possible numbers that we really want to check? Like 0 to 10, like 1 to 10? So I can only get 10 integers. Program should keep track of frequencies in array declared using in number frequency 10. No. no. I have a program that uses C code to read a set of integers and then outputs the most frequently submitted integer and sum of the integers. Your program should keep track of frequencies using an array declared using int num frequency 10. Int num frequency 10. It's kind of unclear to me what they want. What do they want? We want to get Let's assume that we get 10 numbers. Right, so we get 10 numbers. Let's say we have a 2 here, a 3 here, a 2 here, a 1, a 3, a 9, a 8, a 7, a 2, and a 6. We want to get these 10 numbers and read it into an array inside here. 10, right? So we're reading 10 values. Cool. 
And then once we do that, now we want to check to see how much times we see the, uh, a particular number. So two, the first number is like one. But if we see the number, okay. All right. All right, I think I understand. So the first thing we want to do is to read all the information. So we create a for loop and say for c is equal to zero, c less than 10, c plus plus. And we're going to actually log around our space by added, do the unthinkable and put the curly bracket up here. All right, so after we do that now, we will print please enter value. Scan effort. Um, scan it into a number. Um, twenty percent D. All right. So once I read that, I'll finish up this for look here. So that's 10 numbers I have in the array. Now I want to go through the array and check to see how much of each number is there. But it doesn't matter what number they put in, any number they put in, I have to be able to go through it. All right, so I'll create a for loop. I'll put these back to CMC. C less than 10, C plus plus. So we'll read that up there. And I'm going to now keep track of where C is. So we'll do our next loop. Or I call it I. Or I is equal to zero. I less than ten. Can we go through ten again? No, that would be nine. Uh, that's not ten. Okay, cool. We will do I plus plus. Okay, so that is going to give us the ability now to hold the first value and compare it with all the others. Um. Okay. So we will take the loop. First loop will be to go to keep track of the location. Okay, so we want to say now if if is anybody available number location C is equal to num location i if the value at location c is equal to i that means i went through the array i started here and I'll be the first this is this is the only value of c and then all the i's will keep jumping if i see one that matches it i'll be like yes carried out by one then i'll do that again and again and again and again until i find it and then carry it out by one okay okay If that happens, then I'll say, okay, freak is freak plus plus. Frequency plus plus. But I need to know what number I'm dealing with. So I will say um, high num. No. I have to find a way to keep track of the two. 
of the number that are currently working on. If number you can if I if I find a number over and over and over and over and over and I keep track of that frequency plus plus. Alright, so now if I say if the frequency if frequency is greater than max so far. So right now, okay, I can create a variable called max and set that to zero. Alright. If frequency is greater than max, say max is equal to frequency. And then load that variable into the number and then say num is equal to num freak location c right so this if here is going to now check every time the frequency goes up by one i check in to see if the frequency has passed the maximum of meaning it is the highest number that has been repeated so far if the highest if it passes the highest number that has been repeated i change any max value to that and i'm keeping track of what that number is okay my logic is soundish yeah sound sound for me so i am putting one loop to keep track of the location that i'm on which is the first comparison which should be in this case the number two so the first time i loop i'll check in two with c and i'll be like okay i found one two two twos and I found three twos. The fact that I found three twos, that means the frequency will now become, say, okay, I found three twos and I kept track that the number is a two. Right, good, that makes sense. And then the loop will go again a second time. And I will check the second value in the loop, which will be three. And I'm comparing it to see how many times I see it from location one all the way up. If it does, if the frequency value does go up, then the, the max will change. But if not, the max will stay at the same as the one before, and then the number will update. The number will update. And then when I'm done both of the loops, when I'm done all of the loops, all of the for loops, then I'm going to print, print F the I need to find some too some every time I store it back in our value called num I just add it back to the sum each time yeah so we are finding some okay so the um most popular is percent d and sum is percent d comma and then i'm going on put num and sum yeah i believe that's correct this yeah. Alright, so the whole paper is going easy until we reach this part here. This part here, this is work. This is real work. You work hard for this 12 marks here, forget this. Yeah. So first we're reading through, we read in 10 values. Okay, cool. We read the 10 values. Okay, after you read the 10 values, you have to do one for loop to lock your value that you're checking in place. Alright, so it'll be something like this. Two, three, four. Alright. Two, three, one, two, one, four, eight. Two, four, nine. Right. The first for loop is to lock this value in place. The next for loop, which is the I loop, is to jump through everybody. Even though it's kind of testing a lot of your stuff that you would do in um in unit two with um switches and sorts. But anyhow, you keep jumping through. Every time you jump through, you're checking to see if the number that you're on in location C is equal to the number in I. Once that once that case triggers, you carry up the frequency by one. By default, the max value will start off at zero. So therefore, the frequency, the first frequency that I have will always be the, high, the highest value. So if the frequency is greater than max, you take that frequency value and write up. So it'd be like, okay, cool. We found one, two. 
at this first location. We found a second two at this location. This max value will keep going up each time. And then you're going to keep getting... And then you get a third one. Right, the max value will go up to three. Once the max value goes up to three, that means we've kept track of the fact that we have three possible, well, three twos one time, right? To keep track of that two, we're going to take the value as in num frequency location C, which is the one that we compare, drop it inside a variable called num to say, hey, all right, cool, we found three of them. Sum is equal to sum plus num, we're going to take that number and add it back to itself each time we find a match. And this loop will loop through and find a match. So then the internal for loop will finish, the external for loop now will now say, okay, cool, we're done with the two. Let's go and see how much threes we could have. So the three will start comparing with two. And it'll be like, okay, we found one three. Then we found no other threes. So therefore, there would be no... Um, oh, I'd have set back the frequency to zero. Yeah, before we finish this for loop here, we had a setback frequency to zero because we would have finished counting everything before you jump back out to the external four, right? Get here. So frequency will get set back to zero. The reason we set any frequency back to zero is because we have to make sure that this frequency plus plus wouldn't be added to the previous frequency plus plus that we had before. And once it once the frequency doesn't cross max, we don't do any swap or anything. But if the frequency does cross max, you keep track of which one crossed it. Yeah. Alright. We'll call that a day. Yep. Last question was hard. Everything else in this paper? Not too bad. And that is the whole module three. This is the end of the whole paper that we did. Keep IT. May 2021 computer science well done all right it's that time of the year again where it's time for crash courses because you spent your whole year fighting up with school not being able to go to school when you want to always worrying about covid all kind of issues so i have all the csec it cape it and cape computer science crash courses that you need i'll be able to give you the whole syllabus in one quick dose to be able to get you over the hump so here's how the crash courses will be going this year. So for all the crash courses, we have three different levels that you could choose from this year. Level one is video only. That's just a video that will be about six to eight hours long that covers the entire syllabus going through in a kind of like a speed run, explaining every single thing, but not explaining every single thing, if you understand what I mean. Level two is a video and a class in April where you get to ask me anything about the syllabus. So you'll get the video in advance, you could watch it about two to three days before, and then you come to that class, and then you ask whatever question you need to ask. And the third one is you get the video, you get that class, and you get access to our WhatsApp group directly to be able to ask me questions at any point in time, whenever you're doing any past paper, whenever you're studying any work. And that's how the crash course is going to run this year. So the crash courses will be CSEC IT, Cape IT Unit 1, Cape IT Unit 2, Cape Computer Science Unit 1, and Cape Computer Science Unit 2. Those are the days. Each one runs from 9 to 12. That's if you take the class option you will be able to come into that class and ask any question about the syllabus and of course you will get the video a few days in advance where you can watch through the whole thing so what are the course well for all crash courses csec and cape basic which is the video alone will be 150 200 will be for the standard and the pro will be 250 which is the video the class and the whatsapp group to ask questions at any point in time so how do you register you have to make it simple tt.com forward slash crash course and you will be able to see all the courses that are available you choose the one you want you register go through the payment and then you will be given the video once you're given the video you will be able to watch it at any point in time of course if you register for the other ones you'll be given the video and you'll be given the timetable of when your class is going to be you'll be added to a google classroom and if it's a pro you'll be given the video you'll be given the class and you want your phone number will be added to our whatsapp group so that's make it simple tt crash courses so i look forward to seeing you all april everything is going to be launched so you can register from now which is from march for them and you might just get a video before the end of March. And just in case you're wondering, these crash courses cover the new syllabuses. So the new syllabus for IT CSEC that launched a few years ago, the new syllabus for Cape IT, and the new syllabus for ComSci. All the new stuff, all the things that they put into the syllabus that may not be always clearly explained, or the current textbooks don't have it, 
these crash courses have it. Make it simple TT.com forward slash crash course. So I'll see you all there.